Hi everyone, in today's video I take up uh, another important rule and I will try to go deep into it. Uh, so let me know after you watch uh, whether you like the video, whether you agree or disagree with any of the points I make and I look forward to your feedback. So without wasting much time, let me get into the rule. So today we are going to be taking up rule number five. Rule number five is uh, not a very long rule. It's actually a pretty short rule. But to be honest, you can talk hours about it. So instead of talking hours about it, I will try to keep it short because I know that uh, no one wants to hear me talk hours about uh, a rule. So let me uh, go through this rule and again, let me focus on some of the important phrases, some of the important words that you should be focusing on when trying to remember how to apply for this rule. Now this rule is very important. Do not underestimate this rule by looking at the number of sentences that make up this rule. It may be short, but it's very important. All right, so rule number five, uh, I would say between uh, rule number two and rule number two, five, these are the most important rules that you have to understand. People un often underestimate them because they are short, but they are very important. Now rule number five is short, but it has two very important elements. The first one is you must pay attention to everything. Now let me show you what I mean. So the first keyword is every vessel. When it says every vessel, that means every vessel has to comply by this rule. Now, I know that the rules of the rule have to be complied by every vessel. And in your oral examination, the server is not going to ask you whether uh, this rule directly. They will put you in a situation where you have to apply this rule. So irrespective of what vessel you are on, you have to follow by these rules. All right. So every vessel shall at all times. So it doesn't matter what time it is at all times. What do you have to do? Maintain a proper lookout. So here you have to focus on these three phrases. First phrase is every vessel. The second phrase is at all times. So when you say all times, that means all times. So people only think it's only at sea when the vessel is moving. No, it is also when you are at anchorage, when you are drifting, maybe even at port. These days, of course, with ISPS and security, you also have to maintain a proper lookout at all times. All right. So when we say proper lookout, the word proper is very vague. We don't know what proper means, right? Proper can be used to describe anything. My proper could be different to your proper. So that's why this is a bit vague. So when we say vague, we have to go deep into what does proper mean. So let's go into the next phrase. So it says you have to maintain a proper lookout by sight and hearing. So proper is being defined by sight and hearing. And as we go ahead, it will also be defined by some of the other elements. Now rule number five, like I said, the first thing it focuses on is you must pay attention to everything. You must have a 360 degree view of what is going on around your vessel. So not just looking ahead out of the bridge when the vessel is moving. Uh, so just not looking ahead out of the bridge windows, but also looking all around the vessel, having a 360 degree view, using all your senses and all the personnel and equipment that is available to you. There must always be someone looking out. If the weather or the situation around you causes concern, then more lookouts must be put up and you must call them without hesitation. You must use all of that information continuously to assess the situation your vessel is in and the risk of collision. So this is what it all summarizes it to be. So whether if you are in restricted visibility, you need additional lookout and you need to call additional lookout. The helmsman cannot be considered a lookout. All right. So if we, if I, if I go into Cockroft's book, I don't know whether you have read Cockroft's book or not. I'm sure you have read Cockroft's book. It's a, it's a famous book for rules of the road. And in Cockroft's book, you will see some interesting facts given about lookout. So Cockroft says that in quotes, uh, it has often been stressed that the lookout man should preferably be stationed forward. Unless of course the weather conditions uh, such as the heavy rain showers or ice or snow makes it uh, impossible. So even if you have seen the movie Titanic, you must have noticed that in the movie Titanic, the lookout is actually stationed forward in completely separate from the bridge. There are two people there and they're located in the forward part of the vessel. 
and they are the ones who first picked up the iceberg and they shouted about the iceberg so you must have noticed that all right so uh, ideally lookout should be forward unless of course the attention is distracted by uh, rain heavy snow showers and it's not possible to keep a lookout i remember when i was a cadet in restricted visibility my captain actually sent me forward and he asked me to keep a lookout forward he, i was just standing on the foxhole deck it was foggy but it was not raining so i was just wearing my jacket and standing in the front it was in china and i was keeping a lookout so a, a, an advantage which has particular application to vessels these days of course is operational radars and arpas and uh, the um, lookout if we station forward can also hear fog signals coming from ahead all right so however other factors such as the need to have a seaman immediately available in case of sudden emergency and the value of being able to communicate directly with the lookout man should also be taken into account now we go into the next phrase by all available means so when we say all available means uh, we you probably can count some of them yourself so we can talk about the seamen the personnel who are involved the binocular the radar the arpa the ais the vhf conversations the fog signal uh, whatever you can think of uh, all available means is included in that all right of course these days you have egg days you have rotors so you can uh, when i say egg days of course egg days means you only uh, navigate around so you have to have a whole idea about in what waters you are in what is there around you so when we say look out we are only not assessing uh, about ships we are also uh, we are also talking about the depth of water we are talking about if there is any land nearby if there are any buoys or recons nearby so when we say look out we are not only looking out for ships to avoid risk of collision we are also assessing the situation so you can see the words here will say full appraisal of the situation full appraisal of the situation uh, and of the risk of collision so risk of collision is part of it but you also have to make a full appraisal of the situation all right so what are the available means all available means so like i said before you include your personnel you include your binoculars you include your radars arpas you have to hear the vhf conversations you have the ais uh, whatever you can think of all available means Uh, uh, that can help you to identify what is going on around you and then of course we have the next word prevailing circumstances that means what is going on around you all right so the requirements to maintain a proper lookout includes looking and listening maintaining a continuous watch by sight by hearing both inside and outside the wheelhouse looking means looking out of the windows all the time using the egdis the prime function of egdis is to help you be sure that your ship is not moving into danger its other functions are also useful but you must not get distracted by them you must also be using the arpa you must be aware of the effects of the clutter of small targets and the range and limitations on the set using a vhf radio you must listen to what is going on around you but you must always think carefully before calling other ships on vhf it always takes more time than you think and it may cause delay and confusion because sometimes you may not identify the correct vessel so you can see when i talk about prevailing circumstances and i talk about prevailing circumstances and conditions i am making a full appraisal we are talking about everything that is happening around us even monitoring the sound signals ensuring that you can hear what is going on outside the wheelhouse being aware of the effect of keeping a closed wheelhouse and of distracting noises inside the wheelhouse using the echo sounder frequently and systematically monitoring the depth of water beneath your keel the seabed is often the nearest point of danger avoiding distractions such as wheelhouse and deck lights other people navigational records and routine paperwork including chart corrections and uh, uh, often uh, officers in the open sea they underestimate the prevailing circumstances they think there is open sea there is hardly any traffic around they get busy with doing their work i have been guilty of it myself trying to do chart corrections and suddenly a vessel will come out of nowhere because the other vessel also may be thinking the same they are also maybe underestimating the situation maybe they are not monitoring your vessel you are not monitoring the other vessel and even in open sea when there is sufficient sea room when there are hardly any vessels around less traffic you may run into a close quarter situation so to assess the risk of collision you must continuously ask yourself is a collision possible because of the action or the inaction of any vessel in the vicinity including your own vessel is a collision probable if so the risk of collision is already here and you need to act urgently so always keep a proper lookout by sight and hearing 
all right so if i keep going it says of the situation so remember when we talk about lookout it's talking about everything that the vessel is experiencing at the point that point of time all right now if you go back to cockroft's books uh, there are a few incidents case studies described there uh, and you can read those case studies all right so the courts are also likely to take into account the number of lookouts available in addition to the state of visibility probability of meeting other vessels and other factors when considering the sufficiency of lookout now on many ships of course uh, at daytime uh, with clear visibility uh, lookouts are not posted the officer on watch is supposed to be acting as a lookout and uh, so the lookout the seamen are busy in the maintenance of the vessels now this happens on most of the vessels in my time at daytime the captain would sometimes even ask me not to use the radar and nowadays of course i know 24 hours the arpas are on the radars are on maybe sometimes both the radars are on and that's fine but what the point i'm trying to make here is do not rely on these equipments alone and start getting busy doing your chart corrections or doing other work or having a conversation with the vhf uh, you have to have a full appraisal of the situation because tomorrow if something goes wrong in the court of law you should be able to justify that you took all the precautions you did everything you could and still you ran into trouble and that's fine but you need to always have a full appraisal of the situation and of the risk of collision all right so uh, here of course in uh, ocean um, the lookout is different from uh, when we are in port and it is different from when we are in anchor and it may be different when you are in drifting so but at all times you must have a proper lookout there is no uh, excuse for not having a proper lookout the lookout should report uh, lights vessels uh, floating objects and in low visibility the lookout should also report if he can, or she can hear fog signals in uh, in narrow channels uh, and uh, uh, traffic separation schemes where which is busy where there are a lot of ships uh, of course you cannot expect the lookout to report everything so the lookout must use his or her own discretion and report the objects the lights the vessels which are likely to uh, cause a risk of collision especially the small crafts the fishing boats uh, the trawlers that you don't often see uh, on the radar it sometimes it's not picked up on the radar or arpa and sometimes it may not be even observed from the bridge all right and sometimes uh, they are fast moving or they suddenly change their aspect so you have to keep a lookout for that so if you go into cockroft's book they tell you that the proper lookout has always been interpreted by the court as someone who includes the effective use of all available instruments and equipment in addition to the use of both sight and hearing now this applies particularly to the radar the arpas but also the use of binoculars and of the information received by the vhf from a shore radar station or a vts or from other ships also included in all available means all right so of course if the radar is not working properly there is no obligation to use radar in restricted visibility if the radar is not functioning provided it can be shown that there was a genuine fault maybe it went uh, the the radar stopped working at sea and you could not reach a port and uh, you could not get it repaired then at sea all right fine you can't use the radar but that's why the duty of the master is that to uh, arrange for a radar technician immediately uh, in the next port uh, as soon as you come to know Uh, that the radar is not functioning properly all right uh, of course uh, visual lookout uh, is uh, also necessary just because the radar is there you cannot dispense away from a um, visual lookout now in order to keep a proper lookout the officer of the watch must pay attention to what is happening on his own vessel keeping a check on the steering and seeing that the equipment required for keeping the vessel on course is functioning properly uh, anchor watch watch also the duty needs to keep a proper lookout when a vessel is at anchor especially if there is strong winds tides running or if there are other vessels which are likely to be passing by or if there is another vessel which is very close to your vessel and uh, you could be dragging anchor the other vessel could be dragging anchor uh, so and then there are security issues of course in many ports it's very dangerous and there are thefts that happen uh, pirates attack the vessel so of course uh, you have to keep the lookout safe you cannot expect them to fight pirates but at the same time you have to keep sufficient lookouts you have to think about the safe safety of the lookout but anchor watch is not a time to be relaxed so that is why when you hear the word lookout uh, the point i'm trying to make here and now i'll summarize this video is that don't always think that lookout means having a lookout at sea when the vessel is moving no when the oral examiner asks you about the rule of lookout you have to mention all circumstances that the vessel could be in so port sea 
anchor drifting um, um, bunker situation transferring of uh, ship to ship transfers so whatever you can think of at all times that's why i highlighted these words for you guys that every vessel is a keyword all times is a keyword proper lookout so when you say proper you have to understand what proper means by sight and hearing what does that mean sight and hearing is not only your sight and your hearing but also using the senses uh, that is available to you the equipment that is available to you the lookouts that are available to you so you know it all comes down to that so let me know if there is any word that you didn't understand and i'll be happy to take you through that uh, i look forward to hearing a feedback from you whether you are liking these videos or not whether i should continue or whether i should stop these videos i feel that the rules of road are very important because when you go for orals you can make a mistake in anything but if you make a mistake in answering rules of the road uh, you will uh, find it very hard to pass the examination so uh, please send me your feedback these videos are being made only for members uh, so thanks guys for supporting the channel uh, love you all and all the best bye